Welcome to the lesson for 12.4 CTM students and anyone who might be watching along with us. Uh, here we have in this lesson talking about expected value or in other words expectation and fair price. That's going to be the two things we're going to focus on here. Uh, this one a little more involved than some of the past lessons have been with this chapter. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's really not too bad at all I don't think. So let's get started and let's see the, the big thing, the big equation we're going to use you can get right into it. So expected value or expectation, you can call it that as well. Expected value, the equation that goes along with that is this. This is the big thing to know for this lesson. Expected value, which we refer to as E generally, is going to be the probability of something happening first or the probability of a first event. I want to erase that, sorry. It should have been an A. Probability of, an, of a first event times the amount of that first event plus the probability of a second event times the amount of that second event and there might just be a couple things there might be more than one so I'm gonna say P3 times A3 plus and this could continue kinda of just depends on how many things there are to factor into your equation here this could go all the way up until you're done and so for any general situation where expected value or expectation is used going up to however many different things there are how many different events there are so what do these things stand for this is the big thing so let's circle that this is the most important thing to know for the whole lesson is knowing this how to use this so this is where E equals the expected value or expectation meaning exactly the same thing so expected value expectation P1 P2 and so on dot 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 is the probability that the first event so that the first second and I'll just say etc. So if it continues, etc. Probably that first, that the first, second, etc. event will occur. And then the A1 and A2 and so on, same sort of thing is the amount instead. The amount 1 or lost, we'll say. Hello, Bell. <laughs> if the first, second, etc. event occurs. Okay, so let's check out some examples from here. Your book actually has seven examples for this lesson, and I'm going to do four that I feel most, uh, most well represent what we're talking about here. So the four that I think are most important to know. If you understand these four, I think you'll understand all seven, which you'll see in the book too. So here's the situation. We're going to have four different situations to go along with this. A teacher is quizzes, wow, is grading quizzes. At home. Sometimes that has to happen. Sometimes teachers have to bring their work home. She plans to grade for an hour. However, as you can see over here, there's some, some stuff going on too. However, she also has a newborn at home. So here, hi newborn, there there you are, a newborn at home, apparently some other kids too, but the newborn's the only one that's home at this point. So if the baby is awake for 70% of the time, And 
and she can grade twenty quizzes an hour. Twenty quizzes per hour. Eek. Per hour, that looks horrible. Per hour, that's a little better there. While the baby is awake. And 40 quizzes an hour. Per hour, there we go. While the baby is asleep. Here's the big question. Find the expected value. You could also say expectation, but find the expected value. or expected number, probably a better way to say that. Find the expected number. Still expected value though. Find the expected number of quizzes she can, and just to reiterate that she's talking about expected, this might not actually be the case, but if the math holds true here so find the number of quizzes she can expect to have graded after an hour. So I say this may not be the case because these numbers they might not actually hold up this way but we're just probabilistically saying if this stuff is probabilistically true what can we expect the value will be. So uh, I think this is kind of what moms might look like after uh, having a newborn that's constantly waking up during the night and if she has to grade papers yeah that she, she might look like that after a while her skin will turn yellow like the Simpsons characters and and yeah that'll happen something like that so let's see though what's the the solution for this this might even take less time to to solve than to actually write down the question so the expected value is going to be so let's go back to this it's this idea, but there's only two things, only two events that can happen. Either the baby's awake or the baby's asleep. So those are my P1 and P2 parts. So what's the probability that the baby's asleep? That's one of the two things that be, could be happening. And we're going to multiply that by the amount of quizzes you can grade while the baby's asleep. So take this times the amount while asleep. And we'll add that to the probability that the baby is wake times the amount while awake. So times the amount she can grade while the baby is awake. Breaking it down like this, hopefully you remember how to convert percents to decimals. Very easy, just move the decimal point two spots. So the probability that the baby's asleep is, is awake for 70% of the time. So the probability that the baby's asleep is going to be point three. 0 instead of 0 0.70. So we've got again, this is probably while the baby is, or that the baby is asleep. So we have 100% minus the 70% the probability, that's the probability that the baby's awake. Leftover is 30% that it's asleep. So we get that number from there. And then the amount that she can grade while the baby is asleep, that's 40. So 40 quizzes per hour. And then over here, the probability the baby is awake, that's going to be 70% pretty good probability that that's going to be the case and then the amount while awake she can grade 20 quizzes so much fewer baby's crying needs its bottle etc 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 all that kind of stuff I'm not going to be able to get as much work done so we take this times 40 if you take 3 times 4 you're going to get 12 so it's just kind of a matter of moving the the decimal place to the right number of spots plug it into a calculator you're going to get 12 so this is the number of quizzes, uh, expected value of quizzes that she'll be able to grade while the baby's asleep, 12, and then while the baby's awake, take that times that, you're going to get 14. And so this total expected value is going to be 26. And that, that makes sense too because if she was crying and awake the whole time, she'd only be getting 20 done. If the baby was asleep the whole time, she'd be able to get 40 done. 
So it's going to be somewhere in between there, but since the baby is more likely to be awake than asleep, it makes sense that it should be a little closer to the 20 value than the 40 value. So this would be 26 quizzes for the final answer. Okay, so let's move on to a second example that will use expected value. If you have yet to take the SAT, or if you are about to take it, you're going to take it soon, you probably want to know this information, a very uh, practical problem. This is actual, actually an SAT sample question. They'll ask, ask stuff like this. Ask. What am I saying? They'll ask stuff like this uh, on the SAT. You'll have five choices, multiple choice questions. Let's, uh, let's set up the situation here. So on the SAT, you don't have to write this question out. This is just a question we'll refer to. But you have to write this stuff out, the handwritten stuff here. There are five possible answers. For each multiple choice question. And I've proctored my fair share of SATs. I know that is the case. So five multiple choice, reach multiple choice question. And this is, this is actually true. So you are given, you're given a point, you're given one point for each correct response. And then they actually subtract points if you get it wrong. So you're given one point if for each correct response. You lose, but it's not a full point. You only lose a quarter point for each incorrect response. And you get zero points. for every answer left blank. So if you're totally unsure and you just leave it blank, they don't deduct anything if you get it. Well, you're not going to get it right or wrong. They don't deduct anything at all. But if you, if you guess and you get it wrong or you think you know the answer and you end up getting it wrong, you lose a quarter point. But if you get it right, you get a full point. So the question, mathematically, probabilistically, expected value-wise is, should you guess, basically? We want to know, is it to your advantage to guess? So should you guess if you don't know the answer? Now, if you want to see an example like this in your book, that's example, I think it's example four. Let me just double check that quick. No, it's not, Mr. Wagner. It's example two. Come on now. All right, so this is like example two in your, your books here. Um, but what should you do? Should you guess? If you don't know the answer. So we can break this down. We can think of this as an expected value question. So what's our solution going to be? We're going to look at this as, or think of it like this. It's the probability that you get it right, or the probability that you guess right. So let's say you looked at this question, you had your five choices, and you just had no clue whatsoever what to do. You couldn't eliminate any choices. You were just totally at a loss. Should you guess? So the probability that you guess it right, seeing that there's five choices, the probability, assuming that we have this kind of fair distribution of questions, it would be a one, or of answer choices, one out of five. The probability that you guess wrong would be four out of five. There are five choices. Only one of them's right. That means four out of them four out of the five are wrong. And so from there we can determine the expected value of each or of, of answering a question. Uh, so I'm going to put a little more space there and now's the time to get out your different color if you haven't done that yet. We are going to use a different color to make some things stand out with this lesson. I think it's going to be very helpful to have that, that different color in this one. So there's two things that can happen. You can either get it right, we'll call that event one, or 
you can get it wrong. We'll call that event two. And then in your different color, let's do this up here. This is going to represent a right answer or a right guess. And then this will be the wrong guess. So we're assuming you're just guessing. on this question. And so this is going to equal, well, what's the right guess probability? The right guess probability, the P1, is 1 out of 5. That's what we just determined right here. What's the amount that you gain by guessing and getting it right? That's 1 point. So this would be times 1. The probability of the second thing happening, of a wrong guess, that is 4 out of 5. So P2 is 4 out of 5. A2, the amount that you get taken off, deducted, for each incorrect response, that's one quarter of a point. Now we can't keep that positive because our expected value then would be even more positive if we add these two things together. This is where we're going to have a negative number. So you're going to have negative one-fourth. Off to the side here, seeing that's the first time we're seeing that in your different color, let's make a little note of that. So we're using a negative number. It's negative because B slash C because we're losing a quarter of a point. So that's why that number is negative. Make a little note off to the side. And then let's solve the problem from there. So 1 fifth times 1, that's just 1 fifth. And then 4 fifths times negative 1 fourth. So you could multiply 4 times 1, 5 times 4, and reduce it later. Or you could, let's do this in a different color, you could just reduce right now. So we're going to reduce that, uh, cross cancel in a sense. We've got 4 and 4 can become 1 and 1. 4 goes into both of those numbers one time. And so you have 1 times 1 with a minus sign. So positive times a negative is going to be a negative. And then 1 times 1, 1. 5 times 1 on the bottom, 5. And so the expected value, if you take a guess, over the long haul, over the long run, you should expect to get nothing if you're, you expect to get no points basically. So let's circle that, not our final answer. We want to kind of describe our final answer here. So therefore, our little symbol for therefore, let's use that here. Over the long run, so if you had this huge collection of questions and you just kept guessing, 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 it's eventually going to average out to probabilistically uh, average out to nothing, average out to zero. So you neither are expected to gain nor lose points by guessing. So to answer the question, should you guess? Honestly, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. Now you may argue and say, well, what if I get it wrong? And there's only one question I'm guessing on, then aren't I going to lose that quarter point? Yeah, but the chance that you could get it right is kind of outweighing, or not, not totally outweighing, but it's, it's uh, canceling out the, the chance that you get it wrong. They're going to cancel each other out. You get this zero value in the end. If you have a bunch to guess on, doesn't mean if you have five questions to guess on, you're going to get one of them right and four of them wrong. That might happen. You could get one, you could get two right and three wrong. You could get them all right, you could get them all wrong. Uh, but just over the long haul, it's saying that it doesn't matter if you guess because the expected value is zero. Okay, let's keep going with this. Let's finish this problem. I'm going to insert a page here. I'm going to need a little extra space for this one. So this. Part B, if you can eliminate one wrong answer. So you are a savvy test taker, and you know that you should use process of elimination whenever you can. Even if you're not totally sure what the answer is, eliminate the wrong ones. And so you're, you're going to eliminate a wrong answer. If you can eliminate one wrong answer, there we go, one wrong answer. Unfortunately, you can't eliminate any more. We're going to assume that's the case. But just one. Should you guess? So is it still going to be it doesn't matter? Or is it to your advantage or disadvantage now to guess? 
hopefully you're thinking, well, it's not going to be to my disadvantage if, if it wasn't to my disadvantage to guess when I had no idea. I, I think eliminating one's going to give me an advantage, and I think that's good th a good thought process there. So let's say, for instance, this might actually be the right answer, but let's say you could eliminate, you knew that it wasn't one only. Let's say you could cross that one out. So I'm, I'm not concerned about actually doing this problem right now. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that you could cross off A. And so you now have, and let's write this out, and leave some space up here again. We're going to use our different color. So the expected value still is that P1 times A1 plus P2 times A2. And now the A1, the, the A2, P1, and P2 representing still the right guess and the wrong guess. So we'll keep this as the right guess, and we'll keep this part as the wrong guess. So two different events can happen, right guess or wrong guess. And then in this case, the probability of a right guess, if you eliminated one wrong answer, it would be one out of four now instead of one out of five. And the amount that you get for a right answer, that's still one, so that should be a one right there. The probability of a wrong guess now is three out of four instead of four out of five. And you're still subtracting a quarter point for each wrong answer. So this is still one. This we can't cross cancel anything, so I'm going to have to write that as, or this is still one fourth, sorry. I'm going to have to write the other fraction though as negative, this would be three times one on the top, three over 16. That's equivalent to, this is like four out of 16, one fourth, multiply by four and four, minus three out of 16. That gives you one out of 16. This is a positive value though, so I'm going to actually put that there for emphasis positive 1 16th. And so because of this, because it's positive, should you guess? Yes, because over the long run you're expected to gain, essentially gain a 16th of a point for each answer that you give as long as you can eliminate one wrong answer. So let's write that down in a sentence form here. So over the long run, on average, you will gain 1 16th of a point. may not seem like much, but it should add up. So 1 16th of a point by guessing. If you can eliminate one wrong answer. So to answer the question, should you guess? I would say yes, you definitely should. So yes, if you can eliminate one wrong answer, you've, it's to your advantage to guess. You've made it so that your expected value is positive. So yes, you should guess. So let's keep going here. Let's check out a third example. Here's the, the situation. Here's the problem at hand. Suppose 200 raffle tickets, that's what these guys are, we got some raffle tickets being sold. 200 raffle tickets are being sold for $5 each to raise money. for something very near and dear to my heart, the hiking club. So raise money for the hiking club. We need money for for gas to get to where we're going, to where we want to hike. Okay, so that's the raffle. One ticket, or one, sorry, one grand prize. One ticket's five bucks, but one grand prize of $300, nice nice to win 300 bucks just for donating five three hundred dollars and two consolation prizes of fifty dollars will be awarded so we've got 
three prizes basically one grand prize and then two fifty dollar prizes and then this is just kind of a, a technical thing but it's important it's going to change the probabilities otherwise so we're going to assume that each ticket is put back in the bin so we're going to kind of spin these things around in a bin mix them up like that so each ticket is put back in the bin after it is drawn so because of that if you won the grand prize you'd actually have a chance to win the consolation prize too and so part A you're going to find your expectation i.e. in other words expected value so find your expectation if you purchase one ticket what can you expect to happen if you purchase one ticket how much money in other words can you expect to gain or lose on average so if you purchase one ticket there we go we'll leave a little space up here to write some stuff above it in our different color and here's what we got so we're gonna start off with the grand prize so up here, this is going to represent the grand prize. We're going to be adding things together. We're going to have this plus probability times amount, probability times amount for the consolation prizes, and plus the probability times amount for no prize. So three different things can happen on this one. Instead of two, we have three different parts here. So the grand prize right here, consolation prize. Still be pretty happy with fifty dollars taking home fifty bucks if I just gave five to the raffle it's all for a good cause though it's all for the hiking club so don't feel like you're you're just throwing your money away thanks for helping us out uh, and no prize is over here so sorry to the rest of you no prize awarded over here so what's the probability of the grand prize of winning that grand prize well there's two hundred tickets only one person is going to win that only one ticket will be the winning one so this is a 1 out of 200. If we go back to the very beginning, we're using this now. But now instead of just two events, we have three events. So probability of the first event times the amount of the first event. This is amount won or lost. We are winning. We're winning $300, yes. But you had to pay $5 to get that ticket in the first place. So the number that should go here, this is the part that I'm expecting might be off in the future carefully carefully listen to this this should be 295 why is this 295 it's the 300 minus the five bucks that you had to pay for it in the first place so you are getting a net of 295 dollars you're getting a, a net amount of that much so 300 minus five dollars since you're paying five bucks for the ticket so five dollars for the ticket write that off to the side in the different color important note to make right there that's why we're using 295 here instead of 300 all right what's the consolation prize so we picked one out but then we put it back in so there's still 200 tickets to choose from what you want over the total it's probability so there's 200 and what you want or how many prizes there are there's two of them so we're gonna have two over 200 and then what would the amount you get be it's not gonna be 50 be careful it should be 45 because you had to pay 45 you had to pay 5 for the ticket so you'd be actually netting $45 and so we have that plus what's the probability of no prize well there's gonna be 197 losers basically over 200 and we'd be multiplying that by this one's gonna be negative you lost money by a negative five and so from here now it's a matter of just working out the numbers this one I will work out fraction wise because they all have the same denominators I could plug these into a calculator too uh, but let's work this one out fraction wise so this would be this you could put all these over one if that helped you this is going to be two times 45 on the top 90 over 200 and then this one would be a negative positive times negative negative 197 times negative 5 that's going to be negative 
985 over 200. And I feel like we should make a little note here too about where this number came from in case that's not clear to you later when you look at this. So this was just the 1, the 100% minus the 1 over 100 and also minus the 2 over, or minus 1 over 200, sorry, minus the 2 over 200. The grand prize, minus probably the grand prize and consolation prizes is no prize, what's left over. So 1 minus everything else gives you that. So if we take this and we work that out, we're going to have, this will end up being, plug that into a calculator, you'll have Three, uh, 385 there minus 985 would be negative 600. So we don't have to type that into a calculator. Da, 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 da. And we have negative 3. So this is your expected value right here. What does that mean? What are we talking about? We're talking about dollars. And so we should say something like this. Therefore, you should expect to lose $3 per ticket. Expect two, three dollars. Ooh, yeah. I don't think so. There we go. Lose three dollars per ticket purchased. But remember, it's all for a good cause. Uh, so, yes, you're expecting to lose money on this. If you win the prize, that's great. That's awesome. Congratulations. But if you don't, you're still helping out the hiking club. And so we thank you for your generosity. All right, so per ticket purchased, part B. Find your expectation if you purchase four tickets instead. So if you purchase four tickets, hello again, Bell. And so you might be thinking, oh man, we gotta got to do all that over again? Well, no, because if you purchase one ticket, it's four or three dollars. If you purchase four tickets, all we need to do is multiply four times negative three. That's if we lose three bucks per ticket, we're going to lose twelve dollars for four tickets. So it's a negative twelve. And so we can say, therefore, you should expect to lose twelve dollars. Are your chances of winning better? Sure, but over the long haul, or or uh, this is probabilistically ex the expected value of what we're thinking we're going to lose. We're going to expect to lose twelve dollars on average. If we took all the possible scenarios, on average we would lose twelve dollars in all those scenarios. Okay, number four, example four, final example here introduces one final idea this idea of fair price you saw that in the vocabulary hopefully as we began the lesson I don't know if you can hear your kids talking in the background I'm recording this I'm trying this right now in the the middle of the day during my prep period and just seeing if I can get this done at school here I, th I think I might be able to pretty nice so we have expected value plus cost to Play. So that's what fair price is. Fair price, if you see that phrase, this is how you can figure it out. Expected value plus the cost to play. And so, final example, you probably know this guy. Uh, that's Daniel Craig in real life, but who is he playing? He's playing Bond. James Bond. Yes, you have to write Bond, James Bond. Yes. Because he never says, hi, my name is James Bond. He's No, he's way too cool for that. He is Bond, James Bond. He's playing a game where he spins the pointer on the figure show and you might say what are you talking about what figure there's a pointer here no 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 this figure silly all right so this is the figure we're talking about man there's no it's no figure over here i don't know what you're talking about and let's put in here let's use our different color for this too just to make it stand out a little 
a better way to say this is zero dollars and there's this pointer so we'll make a little pointer in here that's our arrow we'll be spinning that around this is a fair fair thing so it's a, the same chance it'll land on any possible place as you spin it around it's not like there's a bump in the wheel that will always stop it on zero something like that uh, this one will be a hundred dollars this one will be five hundred dollars this one's a hundred dollars again and this one a thousand dollars down here yes Bond, James Bond he does not mess around he's going for the big bucks right away he's, he's not going to be playing any dollar or penny slot games nope not this guy uh, so we've got each one of these spaces you can assume that this is a quarter of the circle this is a quarter of the circle and that this is splitting it in half so this would be one eighth and one eighth of the circle right there alright and spins a pointer and a figure shown one more thing I gotta say here it costs this is a serious game here gotta have some money to come play this game it costs eight hundred eighty eight dollars to play the game Whew. okay so you're sure hoping it lands on one of these two otherwise you're gonna be out some money and choice A, or not choice A, but part A, find his expectation. So if he plays this game, on average, what can he expect will happen? Will happen On average, how much money can he expect to gain or lose? Find his expectation. It's going to be like this. So the expected value, leave some space up here. We'll write some stuff above that. So we're going to have looks like five things that can happen. You can get zero, you can get a hundred in these two spots, you can get five hundred, a thousand, or five thousand. So in this case, going back to, to this idea at the beginning, this is going to be done five different times. We'll have one, two, three, we'll have a fourth one, and then your N is five. So we'll have up to five times here. And so we have, here is going to be I'm going to write this one a little smaller. Just need the space here. So zero dollars is going to be right there. I'll put a hundred dollars right here. This is all probability times amount. This will be five hundred. This one will be a thousand. And this one will be five thousand. So we have to figure out the probability of each thing happening times the amount you would be gaining or losing overall, net amount with each one. So this is going to be zero. There's a one-fourth chance of that happening. So one quarter times, well, you're going to be losing out on all of your money that you paid to play the game. $888 fit lands here. You lost all $888. That's going to be a minus 888 here you're going to be just like you had the raffle ticket you have to think of what you paid plus we're taking that that's kind of like a negative number what you paid is a negative number the five dollars and then we're adding the amount you win in this case so here you're winning a hundred dollars back but you paid eight hundred eighty eight dollars so still not too good for you this is going to be a quarter plus one eighth that's like two eighths plus one eighth would be three eighths so we have three eighths times negative 788. Here we're going to have 1 8th for 500 times. You paid 888 to play, so you're still losing money, but not as much. This will be 388. We have this plus 1 8th now. Now you actually gain some money. So 1,000 minus the 888 you played, or you paid to play is going to be a positive value now, 112. Positive 112. And then finally, this is what you really want to happen. You want to win that $5,000. You want it to land there. Uh, so 1 8th times, you'll have 5,000 minus the 888 would be $4,112. You'd be walking away with that much more money if you won it by having it hit or land on that space. And so now it's a matter of multiplying this out. So let me get out a calculator and let's do this stuff in the calculator. So we have one-fourth 
have that. That's 0.25 times negative 888. Let's see, negative 888. I think I have to hit it like that. And let's see, we get negative 222. Some of you probably already knew that one in your head. This one a little tougher though to do uh, in your head like that. Let's clear this off. And we've got 3 eighths. That should be 0 0.375. We're going to multiply that by 7 eighths. Make it negative. Um, oops, that's fine though. If we have this times this. It's going to be positive 295.5, but it's positive times a negative, so it should be a negative 295.5. Okay, so let's put that here. I put a plus sign there, and shouldn't have done that. That should be a minus sign. So minus 295.5. 1 eighth times 388. For the rest of these, I'll just tell you that I. No, nah, you know what? It's better to double check it. I was going to say I'm, I'll just tell you that I already did the math on it, but let me double check it just to make sure. So it's 48.5, but it's going to be a, a minus that. Because you have positive times a negative, and then 1 eighth times 112. That's 896, so that would be a plus 896. That should not be 896. Hold on a second. I did 8 instead of 1 8. So 1 8. 1 divided by 8. There we go. Times 1 12. That's right. That's better. 14. And we take this. And if we clear that off, we have 1 8. 1 divided by 8 times 4 1 1 2. That would be 5 14. So if we add all these together, Let's do that real quick and see what we get. So negative 222, make that negative. Okay, minus 295.5, minus 48.5, plus 14, plus 514. That gives me negative 38. So negative 38. This is dollars, so you would expect to lose every time you play. On average, you should expect to lose $38. Now, part B, this is part A. Part B I'll do on a separate page. Part B is find the fair value of the game. Now, fair value, we just wrote that up here. We're going to use that equation. So fair value equals expectation. In other words, the expected value. So I'll write down both for now. Expected value or expectation plus the cost to play. So expected value or expectation we figured out was negative 38. The cost to play is 888. Add those together and you get $850. So the fair value, the amount if they're going to not win or lose any money over the long haul, the people in charge of operating this game, the fair value, quote unquote, that would give a zero dollar uh, expected value would be 850. So this is the fair value. We can actually verify that. So this in a sense, we're done, or we, we would be done, but we would want to check this answer if we can. And. Sorry there, lost my track of thought a little bit. I had a student come in, ask a question. Um, but let's see how we can check this. So we can verify. Let's finish this up. We can verify this. So we're going to do this now. You don't have to do this in your homework necessarily later, but it's a good idea, a good way to know if you did it right or not. So we can verify this answer by checking to see that E, the expected value, equals zero dollars for a cost of $850 to play. So let's check that out. Let's verify that. And so we would do that by doing something like this. So the same thing we've been doing. Get out your different color. This will be the zero dollar part. This will be the hundred dollar part. 
this would be the $500 part. This would be a $1,000 part. And this would be $5,000. So just like before, the only difference between this and what we did before is now instead of 888 to play, we're going to use 850 to play and see that it all comes out to zero in the end. So this would be still one eighth times, or one fourth, sorry, still one fourth. times negative 850 plus 3 eighths times negative 750 now because you're paying 850 to play you're gaining hundred dollars so your net loss would be 750 and you have this plus we have one eighth times you would be losing a net loss of 350 if you got five hundred dollars back uh, this would be one eighth, you have won some money here. You win net total one would be $150 with that, and then one eighth times 4150 here. So 5,000 minus 850 would be that. If we put this stuff into a calculator, this stuff I'm feeling pretty good about, so I'll just show you what it was. When I worked that out, we got this, we got this, minus 43.75 plus 18.75 plus 518.75 this equals zero dollars so I added all this up and it became zero so does it check out yes so I'll put a little check mark there this is verified and so that's not something you have to do but again good to get the extra practice here together I, I want you to have that written down and you can use that to check and see that you did the fair value correctly see that that See that, 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 that. See that? This was done correctly. Because if you did something wrong here, verifying it, checking that, would show you that you did something wrong earlier. Because if that didn't turn out to be zero, you know your numbers are off somewhere earlier on. All right. Bond, James Bond. We'll see you later. Thanks for helping us out with 12.4 here.